Welcome to AMS Performance, home of some of the fastest street and race cars in the country. One of them being the R35 Nissan GTR, codenamed Alpha Omega. But before we get more insight into this beastly machine, let's take a quick look at AMS Performance and why they're one of the best tuning shops in the country. Sure, they can bolt on a turbo kit and do general maintenance, but AMS also spends a lot of time and effort on engineering, manufacturing, and on research and development for complete tuning solutions for a variety of different platforms. However, let's let AMS's general manager, Eric Gotti, explain what makes AMS so special. I would have to say if there was one thing that set us apart from other shops in this industry, it would have to be engineering. It's really easy to just make a part for a car. Say a car needs an intake or a car needs an exhaust, but doesn't really need those parts. We take a very OEM-like approach to creating parts here at AMS. It has to fit like stock, it has to last as long as stock, and more importantly, it has to perform better than stock. If we can't achieve all three of those goals, we won't make a part. And the way we're able to achieve that goal is thanks to some fantastic resources here at AMS in our engineering department. We have four full-time engineers, we have the best equipment around from Ferro Arm to 3D printer, the best CAD software. We can go from idea to prototype completely in-house. And that's something that a lot of shops can't do. The whole point of Omega early on was we needed a shop car. We needed something to test parts out. We needed something to push the envelope. We needed a car to blow stuff up with. And Thanks to Omega, we've actually developed quite a few pretty, pretty amazing components. Uh, some of the more recent pieces are our drag suspension, our, our billet engine block, which should be out hopefully in the near future, our carbon intake manifold, which should be releasing any day now. And I think four different turbo systems are all here because of Alpha Omega. Why the name Alpha Omega? Um, well, it means the beginning and the end and it was a symbol to our staff, to our customers, to our fans on our dedication to this platform. We didn't want to develop a couple parts and call it a day. We, we want to push things. We want to push the envelope and you know, we're far from done. Our, our, next big, our next big achievement hopefully will be behind this bill and engine block. We've never been able to run Omega at full tilt and we'd really like to see what she does. And if we find the next weak link, well, we'll work on a new part for that too. It's been the first R35 GTR in the nines, in the eights, in the sevens. Uh, last fall, it won the Texas Invitational King in the Streets event, which was pretty profound. Um, we've constantly broken and rebroken our records. Uh, it just recently we went 224.9 mile per hour in the half mile. Um, she's done some pretty remarkable things. Uh, we've definitely had some hurdles when it comes to Omega. It wasn't easy. I would say the two biggest hurdles we had were making big power reliably. Um, it almost came a little too easy to us at first. But then the, uh, the factory components started telling us that it was too much. Uh, the biggest, biggest issue being the actual block itself. Uh, thankfully, our engineers and technicians here were able to develop a program that enabled us to reinforce the engine. Uh, in several different areas on the motor and we were able to increase horsepower output from what was about 1,250 horsepower to about 15 to 1,600 horsepower without any issue. Uh, the next big step was definitely traction and we had to spend a lot of time on the suspension before we were able to really get the 60 foot and the short times down in Omega. Uh, it's proven to be very successful though as our 60 foot times have dipped consistently into the 1.2s and we're hopeful and praying that this year we're able to get the eighth mile time somewhere into the four point something second mark. You know, it's funny, when the GTR first came out, the big bugaboo was the transmission. Everybody thought it was made of glass. Everybody assumed that you couldn't do anything without the transmission literally falling to pieces. But I can say with great confidence that Omega's never really had a transmission issue, and we owe that directly to some amazing partners. Shep Trans, Exidy, and Dodson have been at the, really, the forefront for transmission development in the GTR, and throughout Omega's entire life cycle, we've been able to stay ahead of the curve. 
Uh, as soon as John Shepard over at Shep Trans thinks that we might be overworking a part, he works with Exiting Dotson. He's already got another one ready to go. And as far as axles and drive shafts are concerned, drive shaft shop's been ahead of the curve the entire time. And we've been really fortunate to work with some phenomenal partners. And it's safe to say that Omega would not be where it is right now without those people. I know that it's easy to look at some pieces on Omega and assume that it's a, it's a lightweight car. You know, we got some carbon seats and some carbon panels here or there, but we've pretty much added all that weight back in in the form of a billet engine block, uh, a roll cage, parachute. I mean, we have a lot of safety features in that car for good reason. I mean, we value our driver's health very much so. Um, the, the car's full interior, power windows. I mean, she's a heavy girl. In fact, without driver, Omega weighs 3,700 pounds. And with driver, race weight, with Ivan suited up, ready to go, it's about a 3,900 pound car. Often we get contacted here, me specifically on the internet, YouTube comments, etc. cetera, where Omega is compared to other quote unquote street cars. Uh, I won't name any names, but these particular cars are very different than Omega. And I really don't think it's fair to call that car a street car, and also Omega in that same sentence. Omega is not tubbed, it's a full chassis car, it has a complete interior, both front seats, both rear seats, uh, it has power windows, everything a street car should have. So while those cars are considered street cars by many people, it is a definition that isn't defined technically by anyone, it's, it's very loose. And I'd like to think, and most of us here like to think, that Omega is a little bit more of a street car than those vehicles. That's definitely not Omega's race. Omega was built for quarter mile racing and a rolling runway race versus twin turbo cars with V10s and more displacement, lighter weight, better aero. It's easy to think that you're going to walk in there and get your butt handed to you. And you know, for a couple years, we were definitely playing catch up, but back up, back in the fall, we were, we were able to bring the best version of Omega we have and we won the whole thing. Now. We're definitely not getting cocky and we're certainly not going to remain complacent because we know that the guys over in Underground and Hefner and Dallas and all the other big displacement twin turbo cars, they're not going to sit on their hands either. So this spring's event should be pretty memorable as well and hopefully we can take it again. Uh, people ask me that question a lot too. Well, Will there be a stopping point for Omega? Is there an end goal? I really can't answer that because the car so far has told us it's not done yet. I will say that we don't want Omega to turn into a race car. Uh, that's never been our goal and race cars are great. It's fantastic put down quick times, but at some point cars like that, they become unrelatable to the, to the general public. A car like Omega can be owned by an individual can be driven on the street and we want to keep it that way. There's no one individual behind Omega. There's definitely certain people that have dedicated more time to the project, but this is a complete group effort. We have easily the greatest staff in our industry. The best, the best minds, the most passionate people, People put everything they have, their personal lives, on hold to do what we need to do to get Omega down the track. And every single one of them is a part of every single accomplishment that Omega has been a part of. You know, over the past year, the GTR arms race in terms of straight line performance has picked up quite a bit. Uh, there's some pretty wild cars that are coming out of the woodwork and some pretty big projects. Um, really not much has changed on Omega. We haven't really had the ability to, to really turn Omega all the way up and something that every shop has been fighting is creating this level of horsepower and doing it relatively reliably. You know, it's easy to put a motor together that can hold up to one pass, but you need to hold up for more than one pass. Um, thankfully this year we have the build block and we're hoping that we can finally, for the first time, turn Omega up all the way and see what she can do.
One thing we've never done here at AMS is rest on our laurels or remain complacent. It's really easy to sit back and wait for someone to break your record and then go out and do it and try to break their record. Um, for us, it's always been about push forward, push forward, push forward, even if we're the one that holds the record. We set some pretty lofty goals for Omega in 2015. One of them we actually met back in 2014, and that was to try and hit 190 mile an hour in the quarter mile, and we did that. Um, some of the goals we have for the rest of the year are uh, 7.5 in the quarter mile, or quicker wouldn't be bad. Uh, I know Ivan Phipps, our driver, he wants to see a, a 4.9 or lower in the eighth mile. Uh, we have a bumpy road ahead of us for sure. Uh, anytime you start pushing boundaries, you run into hurdles, and uh, we're going to take those head on, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, come out on top like we have been um, in years past. As you can tell, 2015 is shaping up to be one heck of a year for AMS and their GTR. Just when you think Nissan's lofty twin-turbo V6 is plateaued, it looks like it's still got lots left in it. Good luck to the AMS crew this year, and we can't wait to see what you've got in store. Thank you.